Welcome everyone to the class of standard 11, political science. We have been studying about chapter number one, constitution, why and how. In the previous class, we have studied about the authority of a constitution and we have asked few questions, what is a constitution, how effective is a constitution and is a constitution just? Whenever we have a constitution, definitely the question comes how it is effective. What makes a constitution effective? What makes a constitution just? Is it an acceptable constitution by the people? So this question remains to us when we have a constitution. Remember in the previous class, I told you that these questions are with the constitution and when we uh, go through the answer, definitely we will be able to under uh, understand whether a constitution is just whether a constitution is effective. So let us begin today's class with the answers that I told you in the last class and the answers are when we go through the mode of its promulgation. So today we are going to see the mode of its promulgation and remember that we have been studying about the constitution under the context of India and therefore we will be looking about the Indian constitution, the mode of its promulgation, and we will determine whether it is a legitimate constitution, whether it is a just constitution. So let's begin this class with the answer to understand whether a constitution is effective, whether a constitution is just. So we are going to see the mode of promulgation. The mode of promulgations, first of all, we must understand what's the mode of promulgation mean. The concept of promulgation, the mode of promulgation simply means the way constitution was framed, the way constitution came to us, the way constitution was made, that is known as its mode of promulgation. So students, you must understand the mode of promulgation means the way constitution was made, the way constitution came to us. Now, so that is the concept of the promulgation. promulgation. Now, successful constitution has a history of national movement. We know that each constitution which has a history of national movement comes to be a just constitution, comes to be an effective constitution. Let's take the example of South Africa. South African constitution was made after a long struggle for the independence. The South African people, they fought for, against the racial discrimination followed in South Africa and after this struggle, they made, they framed a constitution which was effective and acceptable by the people. So also is the constitution of India. When we think about the constitution of India, how constitution of India came, we will definitely see a struggle behind it, a national movement behind the formation of Indian constitution. So after a struggle of centuries by the different Indian leaders and the constitution was framed and therefore the constitution comes as an effective, comes as a powerful constitution. Now students you may ask question how national, national movement makes a constitution effective. How national movement can make a constitution powerful, effective and just. So remember national movement brings the people and united the people. National movement had a very much effect to unite the people, to bring the people, to make the people one, uh, a, a, a one mind and with the one goal. So when people were united for the independence of India, definitely their mindset were same, their thoughts were same, their minds were same, they were united and therefore that unification, that unification of the people which was made by the national movement makes the constitution somehow effective. As I told you in the case of South African constitution after a struggle of independence when they made the constitution it was just it was acceptable by the people so every successful constitution every successful constitution has a history behind it 
history of national movement. In the case of South Africa, in the case of India, we have a history of national movement after which an effect, a powerful constitution came to us and therefore it is accepted. Now let's go to the legitimacy of constitution. What makes, because we are discussing what makes a constitution just, what makes a constitution effective, what makes a constitution powerful. So we have seen uh, the first thing, the history of national movement. History of national movement uh, makes a constitution effective because when the most national movement united the people, make the people one mind, same mind and same uh, having same goals. So that is what one reason what makes our constitution ineffective a just constitution. The next one is the the success of a constitution draws its legitimacy from. Now the success of how a constitution is the made and how constitution becomes successful. We know there are many constitution made by the people, but they are not acceptable. They had a question, they were questioned by the people of the country. They were rejected by the, uh, uh, the people of the country. But then how the uh, constitution gets its legitimacy, gets is uh, the legitimacy and how a constitution mix become uh, accepted. So to understand that we have to go through the mode of its promulgation again, how this constitution was made, who made this constitution. There are many constitution which was made by the military dictators, military uh, dictators and therefore the question always remains the constitution which was made by one military dictator is it legitimate is it just is it correct is it good so this type of question, question always remains with the constitution which are made by one person one military leader and there was always there is a question whether this is, is a just constitution whether it is a acceptable constitution, whether it's a good constitution. But when we think about our Indian constitution, when we think about the constitution of South Africa, how this constitution was made, who made this constitution? So we see that legitimacy, the perfect next of the constitution comes from these three, three and four things. First of all, national movement. As I told you, why our constitution is legitimate constitution, why our constitution is a perfect and just constitution, why our constitution is a powerful constitution, because it has a history of national movement. It has a history of national movement behind it. The national movement united the people of the country, made the people of the country think together, made the people of the country to focus on the same goal. And on that context, in that, in that situation, when a constitution is made by some group of people, and definitely it is acceptable by all the people of the country because all the people were united at that time. Okay, so uh, legitimacy of the constitution comes from these three, three or four things, first of all, the national movement, the history of national movement. Next one is immense public credibility of the framers. The constitution was made, the, in, when we think about the Indian constitution, it was made by a constituent assembly, a group of people. First of all, a group of people were chosen indirectly by the people of the country from different community, from different caste, from different religion, and from different background. So a group of people were selected. They were the framers. They were the uh, framers of Indian constitution. And those framers, they had an immense public credibility, immense public credibility. Why this constitution is effective? Why this constitution is effective, uh, acceptable by the people? Because the framers had an immense credibility. They were faithful to the people. They were very much accepted by the people. So all the people of the country accepted those framers. They believed on those framers and therefore they were trustworthy, they were legitimate and therefore when they brought a constitution, when they made a constitution, definitely 
a constitution becomes an acceptable constitution, a just constitution. So how we can say our constitution is a just constitution, is a legitimate constitution, because the makers, framers had an immense credibility among the people. And therefore, people have no problem to accept the constitution which is made by those people. Next one is the immense, uh, next one is the, they had a capacity to negotiate with diverse groups. They had a capacity to negotiate with the diverse groups. This is the other thing. Constitution is acceptable. Constitution is just and good because people, those who made, those who framed this constitution, they were very much able, they had a capacity to talk with the people, to convince the people that constitution is good. The constitution is not only a set of rule and regulation, but this constitution has everything for the people, for the benefit of the people, for the benefit of the country. And therefore, the makers, those people were very much they were effective, they were very much efficient and able to convince the people that constitution, what they have made, is very much ex good and it is acceptable. So they had a capacity to negotiate with the diverse group. And they were able to convince the people that the constitution is good and this constitution is not for the aggrandization of the personal power was not the motive. They, they convinced the people this constitution is not made for their, the, to show of their power. They were, they were able to convince the people that the constitution is made by the makers, not for their the personal motive. There is no personal motive in making of this constitution. This constitution is made for every one of the country and the framers did not make it for their own personal motive. And that's what they were able to convince the people, make the people understand. And therefore, the constitution uh, is acceptable. We see the way to the referendum. We come to the referendum. The way to understand that whether it is a constitution is effective or not, whether a constitution is just or not, whether a constitution is good or not, the best way to, one way to understand that, determine it is a referendum. Referendum means giving votes. By giving votes, by giving the votes by the people of the country, people determines whether it is a legitimate constitution, is it a just constitution, it is, a, is it a good constitution. So there are countries where referendum was done to determine the legitimacy of the constitution, but in case of Indian constitution, no need for any referendum. For the Indian constitution, there was no need of any referendum, such referendum to determine the perfectness, the legitimacy, effectiveness uh, of the constitution because, because of the popularity of the Indian leader. Indian leaders, those who made the constitution, those who framed the constitution, they were so much popular among the people. They were so much trustworthy, they were so much uh, uh, credible to the people that there was no such referendum was done in case of Indian constitution. And therefore, whatever the constitution made by those credible, trustworthy people, they have given to the people of India, it is acceptable by the people of India and no need of any referendum because those peoples were the credible people, they were able to negotiate or convince the people that constitution is good and it is not for not made for any personal motive, any pers personal uh, power, it is made for the people of the country. And those people were very po popular among the people, acceptable by the people, and this constitution is made after a history of Indian national uh, movement, this all things makes the Indian constitution a just constitution, an effective constitution, a powerful constitution. So now you understood that how do we understand whether our constitution is just and our constitution is legitimate and effective. So these are the answer. When we go through the mode of promulgation, we understood when we go how the constitution was made, who made the constitution, we can understand whether it is a perfect 
whether it is a good constitution. In the next class, we will see the substantive provision of a constitution. When we go through the substantive provision, when we determine, when we understand the provision given by the constitution, we will also understand whether it is a good constitution or not good. If there is any provision for the people, if there is provision for all the community of the people in the constitution, definitely it will be a good constitution. If there is no substantive provision, if there is no benefit for the people, definitely people question the constitution. So I hope you understood this class. That's all for today. Thank you very much.